Now we're going to show you how to configure a regular analog system into an AES system. This system will use the case op boards in each amplifier to distribute the AES within the rack. This could be used for hundreds of amplifiers, but in this situation we'll just use one rack. We already set up this system with two micro edges on the bottom, full range at the third amp from the bottom, uh, a subwoofer, fourth amp, another full range, and the top amp actually isn't being used, but we will configure that for AES. They're all set up in this group already. We will leave that. And first thing we want to do is identify what amp will be the transmitter amp. And in this case, I have the bottom amp wired to be the AES transmitter amp. So we need to change the routing on the input from analog which to AES, rear AES, DSP out. Channel 1 is fine. This is a floor monitor. Down here, we need to use our repeater system and to forward the rear AES to the AES 3 A pair. That's two channels of audio on the A pair. We will repeat that on the B pair. Uh, we could send it just to the B pair as well and repeat it on the A pair or we can go to the A and B pair. For this example we'll just send it to the A pair. In fact now the amplifier is now going to take the rear AES coming in and transmit it to the other amplifiers. We also have set this up for an analog backup if there is no AES signal and we will do that on all the amplifiers. So. That's the first amp. The second amp is here. I need to change the input not to AES DSP out, but the AES3 DSP out. And channel 2 is fine. I'm going to go down to the third amplifier, which is a full range. And again, it's set for analog. I'm going to have to save this as AES3A because it's going to get its main feed there and analog backup from channel 1 running in stereo. I am then going to go to the fourth amp. Again, changing that to look for the main AES3A input and to have analog backup if there is none. No clock. And to the fifth amp. And to the last amp. So if we did want redundancy both ways, we could actually make this amplifier send it back on the B pair. But for this demo, we will not do that. What we have done is we have daisy chained the amplifiers from the top amp to the bottom amp and taken another cable to complete a star network all the way around from the top to the bottom amp. Therefore, we have a complete loop. Now, if I break an amp in the chain, because the signal is being derived here at the bottom, I'm still going to get signal all through my system by using this cable for redundancy. So, you can see the orange lights indicating I'm transmitting audio. And let's do a little demo. At this point, we're going to send some signal to the first amp and make sure it's transmitting on all the amplifiers. All the channels are muted, are unmuted on the amplifiers, but I have muted the group. So it's a minus 30 on the group. I will send some source. So there's audio going through. If I now disconnect the amp that's feeding this from the transmitter, 
It will redirect the audio through this table with nothing. If I disconnect this cable, it would break and drop to the analog backup that is on that amplifier. So we are now running analog. If I bring this cable back, we are now back to digital. And if I replug this in, we are now back to a redundant digital system. In the same regards, if I disconnect the AAS output of the CD player, it would do the same thing going to the analog backup. Now we're running analog. Back to digital. So there you see an analog AES case op using Ethernet cables. You can run this Ethernet cable up to 100 meters with AES on it, two pairs or four audio channels.